Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Erica Bunker. If you haven't already, make sure you take the time to subscribe. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I make this fabulous dress I'm wearing. It's McCall's 8252. Stay tuned. Okay, let's get started. Go ahead and do all of the necessary things that you know you're supposed to do. Pre-wash your fabric and press it. Don't leave it wrinkled. Do any necessary adjustments to your pattern. Go ahead and cut it out. Transfer all of your markings. So let's go. Okay, first step is to stay stitch one and a half inch from the raw edge. A lot of people think that they can circumvent this particular step, but when you get a stretched out neckline, you'll learn the hard way. Do this on the neck edge of the bodice front and the bodice back sections. Now we're going to finish off the lower side edges of the bodice as shown in the directions by using our single fold bias tape with right sides together. I made my own. You can do that too or you can purchase some. We're stitching this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Make sure that when you're finished that you trim the seams and clip curves if necessary. You notice I'm using my walking foot. It's my favorite foot and I use it for all purpose sewing. Now we're going to turn the tape and fold it out away from the garment and press it in place. I like to press before I understitch. To understitch, I am using my edge stitch foot. And as you notice, the little metal part is actually in the ditch and the needle is stitching one eighth of an inch away from the seam line. Since I didn't use prefab bias tape, I'm going to go ahead and fold in my edges a quarter of an inch and press that in place. Then I'm going to turn the tape to the inside and press. The instructions suggest at this point to top stitch on the outside, but I'd rather edge stitch on the inside using the same edge stitch foot. It's really tomato, tomato, whichever you like. Go ahead and repeat the same step on the other side. With right sides together, stitch the bodice back sections together at the center back, leaving an opening above the large dot. Make sure you finish off the seams with your serger. Next, we're going to make a narrow hem at the back opening edge. I love to share my cheat codes with you guys. And in order to make that perfect turn of a quarter of an inch on the raw edge, remember we had already serged that? Just turn in that edge right there on the serger stitch and then turn it in again and stitch it and square it off right above the large dot.
To make the casing on the lower edge of the back bodice, we're gonna turn the inside edge along the fold line and we're gonna turn it under one quarter of an inch the same way we did the narrow hem using the serge edge. And again, I'm gonna stitch that close using my edge stitch foot just like we did on the bias binding. There are a gazillion ways to feed elastic through a casing. If you ask 10 different people, you'll probably get 10 different ways. This is just the way that I do mine. I use my hook to pull it through and I put a pin on the elastic on the other end and I just kind of catch it on the pin and just kind of work it through that way. So many different ways, so many different techniques. Make sure you pin your elastic in place on the end so that after all of that work, pulling it through, you won't lose it inside of the garment. Take it to the machine and baste the edges closed. Go ahead and stitch the bodice back to the bodice front at the seam sides and at the shoulders. Finish off your neck edge with the bias tape. Congratulations, you just finished the bodice. Right now, take a break if you like. Go pour yourself a glass of wine. Make a snack so we can do the sleeves. For the sleeve, you have two pieces. You have the actual sleeve and you have the sleeve stay. On the sleeve, gather the upper edge of the sleeve between the outer small dots and on the lower edge between the small dots. On the sleeve stay, just gather the top. Stitch the underarm seam on both. With right sides together, insert the sleeve stay into the sleeve and match the seam lines and pin in place. On the lower edge, match the notches and the small dots and adjust the gathers and baste in place. Stitch, trim, and understitch the stay. Don't skip the understitching on this part. This is the magical part right here that's going to make that sleeve hang and puff out beautifully. Turn the stay to the inside and go ahead and match the seam line and the notches and the markings on the sleeve and pin in place adjusting the gathers while you're doing this. Hold the bodice wrong side out with the armhole towards you. With right sides together, pin the sleeve to the armhole edge. Make sure that you're matching the underarm seams, the notches, and the small dots. You are about to gather your life away, making all of this fit together. So you might wanna take a break, top off that wine, grab some water, find something good on television to watch so that you can focus and have the energy to do this. Here's another cheat code. The more pins you use, the less likely you'll have puckers. Baste the sleeve in place the first time. Take it out, check to make sure that you don't have any puckering and then go ahead and sew your permanent stitches in. And finish off the inside with your serger. 
Now give yourself a round of applause. I absolutely love these sleeves. These puff sleeves are giving drama. They are giving bold. They are giving voluminous. They are giving floaty. They are giving exaggerated. And they are giving oversized. Every single thing that I wanted and envisioned. This is why I picked this tap of the fabric because I knew this would be the perfect fabric where these sleeves would hold their shape. Okay, sewing babes, it's break time. You deserve it after that. I'll wait on you. I'll be right here. The skirt is pretty cut and dry. You're going to go ahead and sew the front pieces together. And then you're going to insert your zipper in the back. And as you normally would with right sides together, pin the skirt front to the skirt back and stitch the side seams and hem with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. You're going to finish off the opening of the skirt the same way you did the front edge of the bodice with a bias binding. Next, we're going to form the casing for the ring to go through. This is the biggest problem that I had with this pattern and the instructions. The company did not list the size ring to use for this dress, which was the major detail that probably drew you in like what drew me into this. So I had to kind of look around and do some research and everything, and I decided to go with a three inch ring. To form the casing, slip the lower edge of the bodice through the ring, turning to the inside along the fold line and base the edges in place. You're gonna do this by using your zipper foot your standard zipper foot, not the invisible, and just stitch around the outside very carefully. If you gather this area with gathering stitches first, it will go in a lot easier around the ring. You're going to attach the skirt in the exact same way. Sew on your hook and eyes to the bodice back opening edges at the neck and sew the hook and eye to the skirt opening edges above the zipper. Hem your dress with a 5 8 of an inch hem allowance and then you are done. Thanks so much for watching.